Hi, this is Doug with Database by Doug with a video on structuring your data. So just because you put something in a table doesn't mean that it's a, uh, a good table or something that's useful for uh, creating valuable information out of. So just as an example, we can, we can look at this and go, oh, geez, this is a little funny. Uh, should make you feel a little uncomfortable that uh, this appears to be the name, but then I get to the fourth record or the fourth row and it doesn't seem to be consistent. And now I don't really understand what the, the things are. So, um, so certainly if you're a little more uh, OCD, that might bother you more than other people. But um, with a relational database, uh, you're going to automatically get some kind of organization to your table. There's some basic rules that must be followed uh, that are even more than in a spreadsheet. So, um, so in this example, you know, hopefully you'd get something that would go, well, you know, if this is supposed to be a number that when I try to put the word Joe into a column that's numeric in the database, it would actually block that. So you get some basic organization out of a relational database. And here's some fundamental things that you must do and that you can't avoid doing if you're in a relational database. And these things might not be, or you don't have to do them if you're in a spreadsheet. So um, first of all, every table must have a name. So in this case, the name of this table is called products. So everything in SQL in a relational database is referenced or located or addressed by name. So it has to have a name. Every column has to have a name. You can't have an unnamed column. Every table that you see is a rectangle. In other words, it's a full grid. There's never a uh, ragged set of columns. Every column has the same number of rows. Every row has the same number of columns. Uh, another thing that you have to have is every table has to have at least one column. Even though I can have a table with no rows in it, every table must have uh, at least one column in it or it's not a table. You can't define a table with no columns in it. So obviously, certain things here, you don't have to do this in a spreadsheet. You don't have to name a column in your spreadsheet. It has a column like A or B or 3 or something like that. Um, you don't have to have a full grid of data in a spreadsheet, right? So, um, so these are things that you just automatically have to do and immediately it keeps your data much more organized. So um, if you'd like to do even more, you could do some other things. Um, but you know, uh, let me point out before I go on that just because it's forcing you to do certain things like have a name, doesn't mean that you couldn't pick poor names. So for instance here, I might go, uh, okay, D, what, what does that column mean, right? I've given it the name D, so it has a name, so I've done the bare minimum for a relational database, but uh, I don't know what it means. So this is not very helpful. So hopefully uh, that's uh, you know obvious that for your own sanity and those that might have to work with your data, it sure would be nice to have clear, descriptive, concise names. So let's go back to uh, the products table. In addition to these basic things like having column names, you can enforce very easily at the data level some other things that would keep your data nice and organized and easier to create good, valuable information out of. So a couple things. I could make sure that a cell, uh, some cell in a record, has to have a value in it. It can't be left unknown. It must be filled in. That would be saying not null. Um, I could say that a cell has to have a specific type of data. So for instance, unit price, I could say, well, it has to be numeric. Uh, so I can't use the word Fred or uh, alpha or strange characters in there. I might say that discontinued has to have, uh, you know, numeric, right? So in addition, I could say that the cell should be in a certain range. So I could say, well, negative numbers don't make sense in units in stock. Product name should not have a tilde character in it. All right. So I could make sure that they're valid in some uh, checking way. Uh, I could say that values in a column need to be unique. So in other words, each product ID 
can't be duplicated. So there should be no other product with an ID of one here because I already have a product with that ID. Um, I could say that a value in a cell must be chosen from a list somewhere. So for instance, look at discontinued here. Obviously that is chosen from a list of zero or one. Um, but that list could actually be uh, located in some other table and that table could be changing. So in other words, if I said, well, uh, let me say, uh, I could say that for some value here, let's say quantity per unit, there's a set of valid values and that these all must be selected from those valid values. And uh, there's a number of other things that you can do. These are very easy to define and it's just built into the product to help you set things up so that your data is organized. Now, what that means is that typically if your data is well organized, it's easier or quicker or cheaper to answer some valuable question that someone has uh, an interest in, right? So usually if it's easier, then it tends to be quicker and it ends up being cheaper to answer the question. And if your data is a mess, uh, then it ends up being harder, slower, and more expensive. Now, here are some other things that uh, database people tend to, if you've been in the field for a while, you tend to just know and understand. And sometimes this is more theoretically presented as normalizing your data. It's kind of subtleties in keeping your data even more structured than these basic uh, checks on the data. So first thing, uh, having a primary key. So uh, for every record, there should be some unique identifier or for every table. At least one column should be some unique identifier. The two requirements are that it's not null, so it's not unknown, and that it's unique. Basically what this lets you do is I'll get to any piece of data in the table. So for instance, if I want to find this cell right here, the way I would do it is say, go to the record where the product ID is equal to three, and then go find uh, the value in the unit price column. Now, if I happen to have a bunch of threes for the product ID, then I wouldn't know, let's say all three of these are three, I wouldn't know which of these values I wanted to get. The other thing is if this was null or was unknown, how would I get to any fields in here? I, I couldn't really say, go to the unknown value and get to uh, the unit price column. So that's basically, it gives us entity integrity. It allows us to get to any piece of data in the grid or in the table. A uh, second kind of subtle thing is that uh, a certain column should not change its meaning across records. So for instance, let's say I took something like units in stock and I didn't want to have this discontinued column. So what I would, I could do is I could say, well, anywhere where there's a negative number in the units in stock, that means it's discontinued. So here I would have a negative one. What this means for someone who has to program against this is they have to do an if statement and say, if this is a negative number, this doesn't mean units in stock, it means it's discontinued, right? So this is always extra code and harder to manipulate the data because I have special conditions. So what I'd like in really well-organized, normalized data is that the column does not change its meaning across rows. This always means units in stock, right? So you don't have dual purpose or multi-purpose columns. Similarly, I'd like that about rows. I really don't want, uh, should I say this, every field value in here represents some attribute of grandma's boysenberry spread. It never means anything else, right? So I never keep the name of the supplier in the product table. I never keep, um, you know, when was the last shipment of this in the product table. So the last shipment date should be in the shipment table. The supplier's name should be in the supplier's table. Everything in here should be some attribute of the product, right? So this is always uh, some attribute of the row that it's involved with. Now, um, we would also like that for every cell, there's one piece of data in it. 
So for instance, I don't really want to have a bunch of, you know, multiple values. So I could say 120 comma 7 comma 0 comma 10. So that would be four different values all, all in one cell. I'd prefer not to have that, right? So if I had, uh, as an example, I have, I just want to know what the last four shipment amounts were. I could say shipment amounts and, you know, 70 comma 100. Um, but again, what I have then is four values in a single column and it just becomes problematic for me to, um, to process. I'd have to store that as text. I'd have to strip the commas out to do what I need with it. So what I'd like is one uh, value. Um, furthermore, I'd like those to be what we'd call atomic or kind of single meaning. So for instance, this Douglas M. Klein, uh, I'd prefer to have that stored in three different columns. One would, you know, this is kind of the full name, but I prefer to have it stored as first name, middle initial, and last name. Part of the reasoning is that it's much easier to combine values than split them apart intelligently. So splitting a full name like Professor Douglas M. Klein III Esquire is much more difficult to parse than to put back together. So we'd like those kept uh, separately. So. In summary, well-structured data has good names for the columns and the, and the tables. Uh, the data types are chosen well and appropriately. Valid values are enforced. Uh, a unique non-null identifier. Each column should have a specific single meaning. It shouldn't change its meaning across rows. Each row represents a single thing. It should never represent anything else but the thing it's representing and each cell should have a single value in it. This just keeps your data really clean and ready to process and create valuable information with. Thanks for watching.